everybody, my name is Sarah from Queenie Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine and welcome to QPAM Q&A Soundbites. This is a new feature that we're starting here where throughout a month we will take your kids and teen health related questions online and the following month we'll answer them. We'll answer them in two ways. One, with this video, our sound bites video, where Dr. Dempsey will provide short snippet answers to your questions. But if you want the full articles to go with each of the answers, you can check our blog over at cleanypediatrics.com throughout the month to find full and complete responses. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get started right now with question number one. So question number one comes from Kelly on Facebook. And Kelly wants to know, what is the ideal weight for an active eight-year-old boy? So that's a very good question. The ideal weight at any given age varies and there's a growth chart that gives uh, a range but some of the factors that go into sorting out the ideal weight are things like how big or small your family members are, whether or not you're a premature infant which will certainly affect your uh, size as you come into the early childhood years uh, in any event. Um, but one of the most important parts about this question is that the question says that the child is active and typically an active child is a healthy child regardless of weight and so we'll get into some of those uh, specifics of the right weight for a given age on the blog. Perfect. All right, question number two comes from Jen and it's got a bit of a story to go with it. Question number two is, my nephew got peanut butter in his eye which swelled up, got red and spotty. My sister's concerned that because she has a nut allergy, he could have had been having an allergic reaction as well. Is he too young for an allergy test at 16 months? Should he be kept away from peanuts? So one of the important parts about this question is sorting out whether the reaction was just a skin surface reaction or whether the child truly does have an allergy. Uh, and typically the younger you are, the more likely you are to have benign skin reactions as opposed to actual true allergies. Uh, so that's a question that uh, uh, involves a little bit of, uh, of, of uh, questioning and gathering of history and some uh, testing as well. Um, and you can tune into the blog for information on that one. Our next question comes from Stacy on Facebook, and Stacy wants to know, when do teenage boys grow their brains back? <laughs> teenage boys never grow their brains back. Adults sometimes do, but we'll talk about puberty on the blog as well. Perfect. And our final question actually was for our very own social media assistant, Jared. You can read more about him and his work on the blog. But the question is, how can I best provide comfort for my child or teen in a wheelchair? And he's already written a fantastic post. You can go on to quinnypediatrics.com and check that out already uh, if you wanted to find out the best ways to provide comfort for a kid or teen in a wheelchair. That is it for our very first December 2012 QPAM Q&A Sound Bites video. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you have any questions, you can leave them on facebook.com slash quintypediatrics. You can tweet us at quintypediatric, no S on the end, or you can leave them as a comment here on YouTube as well. Hope you enjoyed it, and until next month, see you later. Bye. Bye.